Hi, this is Sieg Schmalz, Applications Engineer at Microchip Technology. In the previous video, I introduced the idea of thinking in the phase domain instead of the voltage domain. This is the basis for understanding phase domain power and spectral density. Let's begin exploring this by reviewing what spectral density and power mean in the more familiar voltage domain. In the voltage domain, the spectral power density of a clock waveform is a way to show the distribution of the waveform's power among frequencies. But before we talk about spectral power density, we need to talk about spectral power, the way a spectrum analyzer displays power. So let's say, for example, we have a 1 megahertz clock. Power, of course, is measured in watts, and while most of its power is at 1.000 megahertz, some of its power will be at slightly different frequencies near 1 megahertz. If we gather the power contained in a certain range of frequencies, such as a 1 kilohertz range centered at 1 megahertz, we see the total power concentrated in that 1 kilohertz frequency bucket is here, at the peak of the distribution. Now, if I move up to the frequency of 1 megahertz plus 1 kilohertz, which is 1.001 megahertz, and gather the power contained in a 1 kilohertz frequency bucket centered at 1.001 megahertz, we see there is less power than at exactly 1.000 megahertz. We can continue this process of plotting the power contained in 1 kilohertz frequency buckets to complete the distribution as we see in this graph. The amount of power we plot at each of these points in this bar graph is dependent on the size of the frequency bucket. If, for example, I change my bucket size from 1 kilohertz to 2 kilohertz, there will be less buckets plotted, but more power contained in each bucket, leading to higher values of power being plotted. In practice, the unit of watts is not practical when measuring the power of typical real clock waveforms on a spectrum analyzer. As a result, spectrum analyzers use the ratio of the signal power to 1 milliwatt. The ratio is expressed in dB, or decibels, and because this ratio is relative to 1 milliwatt of power, the unit dBm is used as shown here. Next, let us examine a real clock and the way it is displayed on a spectrum analyzer. We see most of the power is concentrated at 100 megahertz. The resolution bandwidth, or what I call the bucket size, is 1 kilohertz. At a 10 kilohertz offset from the 100 megahertz carrier, we can see the ratio of the power there versus at the 100 megahertz peak is negative 85.01 dB. Keep in mind that dBm is a measure of power, but dB is simply a way to express a ratio. So, in this image from the spectrum analyzer, we see the 100 megahertz peak has a power of 5.72 dBm. The power at the 10 kilohertz offset is 85.01 dB lower. So, when we subtract 85.01 dB from 5.72 dBm, we get negative 79.29 dBm, which agrees with the dBm level we see on the y-axis from this spectrum analyzer plot. You may be more familiar with dBm being called signal strength. For example, your home Wi-Fi signal strength is most likely in the range of negative 50 to negative 70 dBm. This is the same as saying that the main peak, when looking at the Wi-Fi signal on a spectrum analyzer, is between negative 50 and negative 70 dBm. Remember earlier in this video when I mentioned how the bucket size, the resolution bandwidth of the spectrum analyzer, changes the value of the power plotted on the y-axis? 
Well, that is not always convenient because different circumstances may lead to the user choosing different bucket sizes, and comparing these results gathered using different bucket sizes is not necessarily straightforward. The way we normalize the results so that the results do not change depending on our choice of bucket size is to measure the power density. In other words, we use units of hertz in the denominator of the y-axis. This has the effect of providing similar y-axis values independent of what resolution bandwidth bucket size is chosen. To illustrate the utility of using power spectral density instead of simply power, let's consider this simple example. When this 1 MHz clock is plotted with a resolution bandwidth of 1 Hz, it shows a power of 1 milliwatt or equivalently 0 dBm. If I increase the resolution bandwidth bucket size to be 1,000 times wider now and be 1 kHz, there is 1,000 times more power contained in the bucket, which means that the total power is now 1 watt or 30 dBm. Obviously, I'm using power levels much higher than real signals like Wi-Fi transmission, but these high numbers help me to illustrate the concept more simply. Now, if I use power density instead of simply power, the results are the same independent of my choice of resolution bandwidth bucket size. The example 1 MHz clock I just discussed with power of 1 milliwatt per 1 Hz bucket size has a density of 1 milliwatt per 1 Hz, which equals 1 milliwatt per Hz. The other example clock I used with a bucket size of 1 kilohertz had 1 watt of power. And if we divide the power by the bucket size, we once again have a value of 1 watt per 1 kilohertz, which equals 1 milliwatt per hertz, the same as before. So here we see the convenience of using power spectral density instead of just power. The y-axis values are normalized and do not change depending on the resolution bandwidth bucket size. Okay, so we have finally laid the groundwork for us to talk about phase power spectral density, and that is the topic of our next video.